Welcome back to Powerful Signal. Today, Mike is going to show us how to install a cell phone signal booster in a home. Since 2007, Powerful Signal has been installing cell phone signal booster systems in buildings of all sizes. Most of the home booster systems Powerful Signal offers can be self-installed, and we provide the instructions and support you need to do the job yourself or have someone do it for you. Every home is unique, so your installation may require some adaptations and adjustments to these steps. Every cell signal booster is different, so be sure to consult the manufacturer's installation guide that comes with your booster system for specific instructions and recommendations. Your first decision is whether to install your cell signal booster system yourself or if you're going to have a professional do the installation for you. Most cell phone signal booster systems are self-installed kits and include installation instructions. If you have a ladder, a power drill, and some basic tools, you can complete the installation yourself. This should usually take one to three hours, depending on the kit and your familiarity with using the tools. For most people, the most challenging part of the installation is pulling the booster system's coaxial cables through walls to reach the amplifier and the inside antenna or antennas. You'll also likely need to use a ladder to climb on the roof. If you're not comfortable with either of those, consider hiring someone to do the installation for you. If you need or prefer professional installation of a signal booster, we typically recommend that you find a local cable TV or satellite TV installer, a home theater or home automation installer, an electrician, or a handyman who you can pay to install your booster system. The installer should have experience with pulling cable through walls. If you purchase your booster system from Powerful Signal, we're happy to talk to you or your installer before, during, and after the installation to make sure the installation goes smoothly and that you're able to resolve any issues or problems you encounter. The four primary components found in almost all cell signal booster systems are the booster or amplifier, including its power supply that plugs into a power outlet, an outdoor antenna, one or more indoor antennas, coaxial cables that connect the antennas to the amplifier. Your booster system may also include a splitter that divides the signal into multiple indoor broadcast antennas, and a lightning surge protector that protects the booster system from nearby lightning strikes. Careful planning is the key to successful installation of your booster system. Before you drill any holes or mount any components, decide where you're going to mount your antennas and the amplifier and carefully choose the paths the coax cables will take to connect everything together. Before you permanently install a booster system in your home, we strongly recommend that you do a test or soft installation. Set up and connect all the components, but don't permanently mount any items or pull cable through walls. Place the antennas as close as possible to where you intend to install them. Bring the outside coax cable in through an open window or door. Connect the coax cables to the antennas and the amplifier. Turn the system on and see if you get the kind of signal strength and speed you're expecting. If everything looks good, you're ready to start the installation. If the system isn't working properly after your test setup, contact your reseller or the manufacturer to help you troubleshoot it. If you purchased your system from Powerful Signal, we'll gladly help you troubleshoot your setup by phone, email, or chat. The donor antenna sends and receives signal to and from one or more cell towers in your area. That signal is then amplified by the signal booster. The donor antenna needs to be mounted outdoors, preferably with a clear, unobstructed line of sight to the cell tower. If there are trees or other obstructions between the antenna and the tower, the antenna will still work as long as there is available cell signal. All other things being equal though, the higher it's mounted and the fewer obstructions between the antenna and the tower, the better the antenna will perform. The elevation of the donor antenna is limited by the length of coax cable it uses to reach the amplifier. Since there is attenuation or signal loss for every foot of coax cable, the best option is to use the shortest run of cable possible between the donor antenna and the amplifier. How high the donor antenna is versus the length of coax cable it uses is a decision you'll have to weigh. The most common mounting spot for the donor antenna is on your roof. Powerful Signal includes an adjustable roof antenna mount in many of our custom booster kits. You can also purchase one separately. A vent pipe on your roof may also work as a mount point. A directional antenna can be mounted to the fascia on the side of the roof that faces the cell tower. If you need even better signal, you can also mount your donor antenna to a pole or antenna tower next to your home. 
This requires additional expense and effort, but it may be worth it if you're in an area with extremely weak outside cellular signal. Omnidirectional antennas send and receive signal to and from cell towers in all directions. They're often easier to install since they don't need to be aimed at a specific tower. If your donor antenna is an omni antenna, simply mount it clear of any surrounding objects. If you mount it on your roof, make certain that it's at or above the peak of the roof line. Directional antennas, such as an LPDA antenna or YAGI antenna, send and receive signal to and from one or more cell towers in a specific direction. Directional antennas typically provide stronger signal with less noise compared to omni antennas, but they do require more effort to set up and occasional adjustment to operate effectively. If your donor antenna is a directional antenna, it will need to be aimed or tuned so that it points at the tower you want to amplify. Instructions on how to find the cell towers in your area are available on our website at PowerfulSignal.com slash FindMyTower. If you switch carriers, or your carrier changes the tower site they use to send signal to your area, you'll need to retune your directional antenna, or even remount it in a different spot on your roof. If your booster system has been working fine and suddenly stops working, one possible solution is to check the direction your signal is coming from and see if it's changed. The outside antenna needs enough separation from the inside antenna so that the two antennas don't feed back on each other, a condition called oscillation. Powerful Signal recommends that you have at least 20 vertical feet or 50 horizontal feet between the two antennas. The manufacturer's installation instructions will give you specific recommendations for your booster. If you can't get enough antenna separation, a metal roof or other metal barrier will often isolate them. You can try installing a metallic space blanket or other large sheet of metal on the ceiling below the roof directly under the donor antenna. The amplifier increases the strength of the cellular signal received from and sent to the cell tower. The amplifier or booster typically mounts to a wall inside your home. We recommend mounting it in your garage, a utility closet, the attic, or another location where it's inconspicuous but still easy to get to. An attic can be the easiest place to mount the amplifier since you'll need to bring the donor antenna's coax cable inside the house and a vent or other opening in the attic is one of the simplest ways to do that without having to create a penetration point for the cable. If you mount the amplifier in an attic or other room that isn't climate controlled, check the manufacturer's user guide to find its maximum operating temperature. Mounting the amplifier requires either two or four screws, depending on the booster model. Screws drilled into drywall should use anchors or toggle bolts appropriate for the weight of the amplifier. The amplifier plugs into a standard 120 volt AC electrical outlet, so you'll need to have an outlet near the location where you mount the amplifier. You'll also want to use a surge protector with at least a 1000 joule rating. Booster manufacturers require the use of a surge protector to be eligible for warranty replacement if the amplifier fails. The broadcast antenna sends and receives signal to and from cell phones and other cellular devices in your home. Your booster system will include either a ceiling mounted dome antenna or a wall mounted panel antenna. Many homeowners choose a booster system with one inside antenna. Homes that are long and narrow, L-shaped or have multiple areas inside where signal is weak may benefit from a booster system that has two or more inside broadcast antennas. Multiple antennas don't increase the total inside coverage area, but they can divide and segment it so you can cover specific areas with stronger cellular signal. Some systems need 10 or more feet of separation between the amplifier and the inside broadcast antenna or antennas. Check the manufacturer's installation instructions to see if that kind of separation is necessary for your system. Installing a dome antenna requires that you have access above the ceiling in an attic or crawl space. If your amplifier is mounted in the attic, it's usually simple and easy to run a coax cable from the amplifier to the location where the dome antenna will be mounted. Mount the dome antenna in the center of the area of the house where you need signal the most. You can mount it in a closet if you want to avoid the antenna being visible in the ceiling. A dome antenna can also be placed on top of a drywall ceiling. The signal from the antenna will pass easily through drywall. Cut a hole in the ceiling large enough for the antenna's mounting post, typically three quarters of an inch or two centimeters in diameter. Insert the mounting post through the hole and twist the nylon nut onto the threads on top of the post. Hand tighten so the antenna is flush with the ceiling. Attach the antenna's pigtail cable to the coax cable from the amplifier. 
Installing a wall-mounted panel antenna often requires drilling holes and pulling a coax cable from the amplifier through your home's walls. Mount the panel antenna on the inside of an exterior wall with its front face pointed in the direction where you need signal inside the house. For maximum signal coverage, try installing the antenna in the corner of a house at a 45 degree angle from the walls. Be certain the panel antenna isn't pointed toward the outside donor antenna. If your booster system includes two or more inside antennas, attach the short jumper cable to the amplifier's inside port. Connect the splitter to the jumper cable. Connect coax cables to the other end of the splitter and run one cable to each inside antenna. Inside broadcast antennas can be close enough that their signal patterns overlap without causing oscillation. Running coax cable through your home's walls and ceiling is probably the most challenging part of installing a self-signal booster system. There are many websites, YouTube videos, and how-to manuals that can teach you how to do this. If you're not comfortable drilling into your walls and fishing for cables, you can hire a local cable TV or satellite TV installer, a home theater or home automation installer, an electrician, or a handyman who can do the work for you. If you installed your amplifier in the attic, you can easily run cables across the attic floor to the location where the inside antenna will be mounted. Be careful not to kink, pinch, or twist coax cables as you work with them. Use wide, sweeping bends in the cables several inches across to avoid damaging them. A bent or kinked coax cable won't effectively transmit signal. Cell signal booster systems use one of two types of coax cables. If you purchase your own cables for any reason, be sure to use cables that match the impedance of the amplifier. Small home booster systems often use RG6 coax cables with F connectors, the same kind of coax cable used by cable and satellite TV systems. RG6 coax has an impedance of 75 ohms and works with 75 ohm booster systems. The advantages of RG6 coax are that it's relatively flexible and easy to find at local hardware stores. RG6 does have higher signal loss per foot than other options, so it should be limited to runs no longer than 50 feet. Boosters for larger homes often use 50 ohm 400 type coax with N connectors or 75 ohm RG11 coax with F connectors. The advantage of 400 type and RG11 coax is that they have lower signal loss per foot than RG6 and are therefore suitable for longer runs of cable, 75 to 100 feet depending on the booster system. 400 type and RG11 coax are stiffer and less flexible than RG6, so they both require wide sweep bends. They're also more expensive than RG6 and typically require going to a specialty retailer if you need different lengths or want to add additional inside broadcast antennas to your system. Most cell signal booster kits include coax cables in standard lengths, usually 30, 50, 60, and 75 feet. Because of this, you're likely to end up with some excess cable in the runs from the amplifier to the outside and inside antennas. If you have leftover cable, snake the extra cable back and forth or run it out and back. Don't coil excess cable. Doing this may cause unwanted signal interference. Powerful Signal sells custom lengths of coax cable if you'd like to have cable runs in your house without any excess in them. A lightning surge protector is designed to protect your cell signal booster from the static discharge of a nearby lightning strike. A lightning strike produces a surge of electricity in the vicinity of the strike. Electrical current naturally wants to go to ground and it may use your outdoor antenna to get there. If that happens, the electrical surge will travel down the antenna's coax cable through the cell signal amplifier and then out through the amplifier's power supply and into your home's electrical system. This can cause serious damage to your booster system and possibly your home. To prevent an electrical discharge from getting into your home, we recommend that you install and ground a lightning surge protector between your outside antenna and the coax cable that connects it to the amplifier. Powerful Signal includes lightning surge protectors in many of our custom booster kits. You can also purchase one from us separately. A lightning surge protector will not protect against a direct lightning strike on the broadcast antenna. If you need that level of protection, we recommend you install both the lightning surge protector and a separate lightning rod. To work effectively, the lightning surge protector must be attached to the outside donor antenna between the antenna and the coax cable that runs inside to the amplifier. Do not install a lightning surge protector inside your home. You don't want an electrical discharge getting into the house. A lightning surge protector may have a male and a female connector on each end. 
These are connected to the antenna's pigtail cable and to the coax cable. Some lightning surge protectors have female connectors on both ends. These require the insertion of a short jumper cable that connects to your antenna. Connecting a lightning surge protector to your antenna is only the first step. Once that's done, you'll need to attach a properly grounded 10 gauge solid copper wire. Do not use braided copper wire. Purchase the shortest length of wire needed to reach from the lightning surge protector to ground without coils or loops. Insert the top end of the ground wire into the lightning surge protector's eyelet and crimp the eyelet firmly with pliers. Run the wire on the outside of your house and attach the other end to a properly installed eight foot copper ground rod. Do not attach the wire to natural gas pipes or any other path that leads inside your house. If you experience a nearby lightning strike and the electrical discharge passes through the outside donor antenna, when it reaches the lightning surge protector, the gas fuse in the surge protector will pop and break the circuit, preventing the current from going any further down line to your cell signal booster and your home. If a lightning strike occurs nearby and you suspect that your cell signal booster system has been affected, contact the surge protector's reseller or manufacturer. They can help you determine if the fuse needs to be replaced or if your booster system has been damaged. We hope this video makes the cell signal booster installation process easier for you. If you have any questions or need a recommendation on the right cellular booster for your home, please visit us at PowerfulSignal.com or call us at 435-634-6800.